Okay, um, just going to talk in general about forgiveness of a close family member and <clears throat> what to do and, and what's happening with the other family member. Well, I was, I mean, I endlessly talk in my videos about Dr. Hugh Len, which I think is a very, very inspiring story. Uh, this stuff happens all the time with the saints and the evolved masters, um, but um, it's just such a wonderful story in the world of, uh, if you look up Dr. Hugh Len on YouTube, Google, uh, here's a guy who was given the files of a Hawaiian prison full of violent people. He didn't go and meet any of the people. He just had the file. This person is a murderer. This person did this. This person beat up their wife, whatever it was. And he prayed for them. He did the forgiveness. He did a special forgiveness process for all the people in the prison. So this is documented. This is why it's such a great story. So he did this hoponopono, this prayer of forgiveness, uh, which is the prayer of a mystic, or more, like, more or less like an enlightened sage, to, to, to dissolve the data held within the collective consciousness of humanity. And because he's at such a high frequency, more or less aligned with divinity, uh, these prayers are extremely powerful at clearing the suffering in the world, uh, like that such of, a, of an avatar or a savior. So, uh, and what happened, this is documented, everyone in the prison got well and they shut the prison down in Hawaii. So that's a documented case. Now this guy wasn't looking for publicity even though a book was written about him. This is just a quiet saint going about forgiving the world for all its transgressions. Now, the thing is, of course, I mean, are you th that evolved that you are a channel of the infinite light to dissolve the data and the suffering within humanity? Uh, if not, then it was going to take a lot more sp spiritual work to clear a whole prison out of their uh, stuff. Um, so uh, there's a lot of other stuff to be aware of. But yes, um, I definitely had an experience which I share endlessly which I think was given to me by the Holy Spirit to share with other people. Where my mother, I, I share this one, can you pray and does that alleviate the suffering in others? My mother, who had diabetes and multiple organ failure, uh, came back after seeing the doctor, her, sweet, her feet were swelling with edema, and, the, and she saw a doctor who was very cold and heartless. And she said, can you give me some medicine? You know, my, my feet are swelling up. And uh, he said to her like, you have heart failure, there's nothing we can do, there is no medicine, you have to live with it, you know, you're, you're too far gone, nothing I can do. And she sent my mother back home and she was distressed. She told me the doctor said there's nothing they can do, there's no medicine, nothing, because of her condition. So I thought, you know, I thought about it and then it's like um, a thought popped into my mind to do the Course in Miracles. Uh, I did it for myself and had many illnesses released from my body. So I did it for my mother. Um, God did not create Uedema in my mother, so it is not real. I cancel my belief in Uedema in my mother's feet. Uh, I'm an infinite being, subject only to what I hold in mind. So I did that, and within a day, the um, Uedema started reducing, and I was gone in two or three days. And because we now had an intuitive link, my mother kind of showed me her legs and told me, she kind of knew intuitively I was doing some special prayers, even though I didn't tell her and her feet were miraculously improving. So that's the enormous power of these prayers. Now, having said that, whether another person improves or not physically or mentally is a very complicated thing. You have to know of how spiritually evolved you are and how much time it would take to be able to alleviate the suffering. Uh, you also have to know what their karmic contracts and what, their, what the soul of that person needs to go through to, um, so even your prayers may be blocked sometimes because the soul requires that, the suffering, for whatever reason. There's different types of karma that the soul has to undo. And sometimes you can intervene and, and the miracle happens, you pray and they get healed and sometimes not. And sometimes you don't know how heavy another person's stuff is and whether you have permission to release it. But in my experience is um, uh, generally the higher more spiritually evolved you are, and the more spiritual work you've done, your prayers are more likely to have a, a faster impact on other people, as long as there's a spiritual permission, because you can't always see what the soul of another individual requires, what you can pray for and release for another individual, and what you're not allowed to release for another individual. 
So it's a complicated answer to that. Uh, uh, and um, But I've seen lots of miracles with my own stuff through prayer and praying for others uh, where they get released of their stuff, but not always. Um, so um, uh, if you pray for them, I, I, my belief is it can never harm the individual to pray that they be happy and free and that God gives them every blessing that they're allowed to receive. Um, it can't harm them in any way. So, um, yeah, so what's actually happening? Well, I mean, if you pray for another individual, what actually happens? Well, when you pray for another, like, let's say I want to cure my mom's cancer or something or whatever it is. Well, again, you know, that might, that, you know, I could do the cancer of the beliefs or the God did not create it and it might release. Um, and uh, or, or it might not release. So um, you pray uh, and uh, you pray out of love and but you also have the humility to know you can't really see the soul of the individual and you don't know your own eligibility and your own spiritual connection as to whether it will or will not be released. So you just pray out of love and you surrender the outcome to divinity um, because um, there are maybe things, karmic factors you cannot see as to whether it gets released and how quickly it gets released or if it does not get released from the other individual. Now, at a certain level, talking about karma, at the infinite level, karma doesn't exist. So once you become enlightened, you realize that the whole experience of separation, of believing you are separated in a body with thoughts, is actually an illusion uh, that you just were identified, lost in a dream. And anyone else who's stuck in that poor, unfortunate state of duality or separation is also locked in an hallucination, a dream of uh, individual suffering. So at certain levels, of course, there is no such thing as my suffering or another person's suffering. Uh, so there's different levels of wisdom as, as uh, the soul evolves uh, into different levels of consciousness. So that's, so if I've got a family member that's suffering uh, and th there arises the intuition to pray, as many prayers for them, then pray. Uh, but also uh, not, the prayers you can't demand of divinity. You're not. You're not. You can't see a person's soul necessarily. So you can't demand of divinity that I'll pray for one day and they'll be healed of everything. It's not necessarily as simple as that. Okay. So um, I'll stop the recording there.